Way to Stay, episode 12. For this week, I decided to try a type of food that I've never made before, Indian food. Have you ever seen the amazing Jonathan's magical scarf of India? The illustrious city of India. I love going out to Indian restaurants, but I just never make it at home. I'm taking a crack at chicken tikka masala. It's very creamy, very rich, full of spices. We're gonna use that as the filling in a classic chicken pot pot. We're using spices we don't normally use, cooking techniques we don't normally use, but that's what this channel is all about. Experimenting, trying new and different things. Make sure you comment below and let me know what you want to see me try next. Now let's get cooking. Just as I said before, this is the first time I've ever made any Indian dish. But let's go on an adventure together, see if we can make this work. So chicken tikka masala usually has larger pieces of chicken, but we're going with bite-sized cubes since we're putting this in a pie. This dish has a lot of layers of flavor, and the first one is the yogurt marinade. It's full of so many spices and just really sets up a nice base for the dish. Once you toss the chicken in your marinade, you want to leave it in the refrigerator for at least an hour, but up to a day. Make sure to seal it very tight, close to the chicken. It'll keep the air out and lock in the flavor. Now we're gonna start working on our crust. A dish this soft and creamy could really use the textural element of a nice, crispy, flaky, buttery crust. Now this part you can use butter, but I prefer to use vegetable shortening. It just seems to work better with a pie crust. And I would actually suggest mixing it up with a fork rather than this whisk. As you'll see in a bit, I got quite a bit of flour stuck in there. Once it's come together enough, you can start kneading by hand. And then you want to wrap it and rest it at room temperature for about 45 minutes. Now we sear off the chicken that we marinated. We don't want to crowd the pan too much, so do it in batches. You want to flip these pieces almost as soon as you put the last piece in the pan. We're not trying to cook these all the way through, just get a nice sear on the outside and get a crust in the pan. All that crunchy, craggly stuff left in the pan, that's called fawn, and we're going to use that to build our sauce. Toss a little bit of butter in there, and then cook our onions in that, making sure to scrape the bottom of the pan so we get all that flavor added in. Make sure you're always seasoning and tasting things as you go. You want every single element to be well seasoned and flavorful. The use of a tomato puree and cream kind of makes this like an Indian spiced vodka sauce. I chose to use coconut milk for my version because it's just extra rich. After it reduces, toss in the chicken and immediately turn off the heat. Because we're baking this in the oven, we don't want that chicken to be fully cooked. Gordon Ramsay always says he loves things that look rustic. Well, he would be very proud, because this is going to be very rustic. I am by no means a baker, and as you can tell, it's going to look a little rough. 
You can decorate your pie by putting stenciled cuts of dough on the top. I'm just trimming the edges, crimping them with a fork, and cutting a little vent for steam. Well, not too bad if I say so myself, especially for someone so bad at baking. That buttery crunchy crust had Thelma floating like a cartoon character. Alright, maybe not. Make sure every portion is served with a piece of that buttery flaky crust, and I top mine with some fresh chopped coriander. So creamy, so rich, and the spices come through big time in this. The ginger, the garlic, the tandoori, the curry. Thelma's loving it, and we'll see you next week for another one.